All right, so we're going to talk about absolute value functions, but before there we get there, I want to talk about parabolas because we did a lot of work with transformations of parabolas. So if you remember, um, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared, 2 squared was um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 2 squared is 4, and so our parabola had a general shape of this. Um, and so we plotted points for the original one, and we called that the parent graph. And then from there, everything else is transformed. For example, this negative flipped it. And this 2 was a vertical stretch. Everything was multiplied by 2. So all of these changes, where it was left and right 1 and up 1, it went left and right 2 and up. Sorry, left and right 1 and up twice as high. 2. Tw up 4. So, this one, the plus 3, horizontally it went left and right because it's with the x, but it always moved it opposite of what we thought it would. Because if you plug in negative 3 here, you're getting to the same spot. And the 5 moved it up 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we first take care of these. And then we take care of, okay, it opens down. One, two. So we have the same general shape that we do over here, but down, except that it goes down twice as fast. So I'm going to go, instead of left and right one and down one, I'm going to go down two. So I go in down four, I'm going to go down five, six, seven, eight. And so that was transformations of parabolas. And it comes into play here, because we're going to talk transformations, but with a new graph. So both of these have a domain and a range. The domain has to do with what you're allowed to plug in and the range is what you get out. We're allowed to square any number and so we say the domain is all real numbers. And the range, well we only get positive numbers out or zero and so I say the range is greater than or equal to zero after we get done. The domain for all for all quadratics is going to be all real numbers because we're allowed to do anything we can plug anything in there. The range is going to be everything less than that point. That maximum is the highest it gets so it's going to be y is less than or equal to and that maximum was that 5 less than or equal to 5. So now that we remembered what we knew let's move on to the new function of the day. Let's plot some points. Um, negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2 because it makes everything positive. That's usually what we think about, but remember it's the distance. Distance from 0, and so that's why negative 2 is 2 away from 0. Negative 1 is 1 away. 0 is 0 away because it's at 0, and so on. So you can plot those points, and you notice that this would keep on going if you kept plotting the points. A beautiful V. So that's what the absolute value graph looks like. And again, we don't want to plot points every single time. Uh, just like, sorry, so domain, we can take the absolute value of x, take the absolute value of any number we want to, so the domain is all real numbers. The range, because it's distance from zero, is not negative. And so y is greater than or equal to zero. So now let's move on to transforming absolute value graphs. So if we take the absolute value of x and then we subtract 3 from all those points, that subtracting 3 is going to cause it to go down because we're taking the absolute value and then subtracting 3 from all the points. So 1, 2, 3... And so it's going to have the exact same shape. But if you want to call that a vertex of the absolute value graph, is down 3. And so just like had this been x squared minus 3, it would have gone down 3. Domain is still all real numbers, but the range, it can now be negative. For a little while, because we're subtracting 3. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 3. 
domain for the next one. Sorry, x minus one is now inside, and so if you do, if you plug in one for x, one minus one gives you zero. And if you, um, since it's with the x, it's horizontally shifting it left. Uh, sorry, to the right one, and so it is the same exact graph, but to the right one. And so that's how handy transformations are. Because all we're doing is we know the general graph, the parent graph, and so now we're just shifting it one to the right. So, with the x, opposite of what we think, so that moves to the left 3, minus 2. That's not with the x, so it's affecting the y, so that's going to move it down 2. So opposite for the x, not opposite for the y. And then this is a vertical stretch. In terms of lines, it's going to change the slope. It's going to make it a steeper slope. Um, and so we've gone left 3 and down 2, and now it has a steeper slope. So it's going to go up twice as fast. Instead of going up 1 and over 1, it's going to go up 2 and over 2. And so, our domain, again, I can plug in, in any absolute value, and so all real numbers. But the range, it never gets below this negative 2, and so y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So all the output values become that. Number 6. So this negative is a vertical, because it's outside, reflection outside of the, the absolute value function. This is a vertical stretch. And so we say stretch, but it's really a, a shrink, right? Because it's less than 1. So it's going to change the slope. And then this plus 4 is on the outside, and so it's affecting the y. And it moves it up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we go down 1 and over 2. So down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. The slope, it's not going down quite as fast. So the domain, again, is all real numbers because we're allowed to take the absolute value of any number. Range, the highest it gets is this. So now we're going to go y is less than some amount just like we did with upside-down parabolas. That's the maximum it's going to get, so 4. All right. So sort of concluding what we get with absolute value, just like we did with all of our other functions. A can be positive or negative. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down, just like parabolas. And it's if it's... If A is bigger than 1, it's a stretch, narrow, narrower. And if A is less than 1, it's a shrink, really, or wider. And that is, all of those are the exact same thing as they are with parabolas and with, with any function, really. This always moves it left and right opposite of what we think. And k is always an up and down shift, not opposite. So what do I mean by opposite and not opposite? If it's x plus 3 moves it to the left, x minus 3 moves it to the right. And if it's absolute value of x plus 3, it moves it up. Absolute value of x minus 3 moves it down. So, there you have it. So explain how each of the graphs differ from the original. Try these by yourself. See if you can figure it out. Truly try it. So, vertical reflection might be just as easy to say, oh, it opens down now.
it's a shrink. Wider. It's a vertical shrink, sorry. Um, this plus 3 moves it to the left 3, and the minus 7 moves it down 7. Because this is opposite, my brain thinks right, but it actually moves left. Minus 7 moves it down 7. Um, just real quick, people sometimes ask me, why is it opposite of what we think? It's not that somebody created it this way, it's, it's just the way it is. Um, because if you plot points, um, if you think y equals absolute value of x and y equals absolute value of x plus 3, um, what we get when we plug in a bunch of variables, this one looks like this. And if I plug in negative 3, I get 0, right? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, so I plot points. If I plot negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, but then I... And so it looks like that. And so this one is the same as this graph, but it's shifted to the left. And so it works out. This is a vertical stretch. It's made narrower. This moves it to the right, opposite of what we think. This moves it down 5, exactly how we think. With the x left and right, not with the x up and down. And now, one last thing. We can also have inequalities. And so this just means less than. So shade below because all the y's that are less than are below. So this is left 2, this is down 1, so I'm going to go left 2, down 1, and we can have our graph, sorry, left 2, down 1, can't even, so there we have it. We're going to shade just below here, because it's going to include all the points less than that. And finally, and sorry, remember that this is solid as well, and that this one down here is going to contain a dashed line. Greater is above, so we're going to shade above. Minus 1, opposite of what we think, and minus 3 down 3, and so right 1, down 1, 2, 3, and this 3 right here is a vertical stretch. It's going to make it narrower, and it's going to change the slope. And so it's going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, rather than just up 1 and over 1. Up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So that's the slope. 1, 2, 3, over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. And so now I'm going to try to... It's always the toughest to remember to actually dash it after you say it's going to be dashed. And so that's why I like to write it so you don't forget. And it's greater than, so it's going to be on the inside. And that's how you graph absolute value, and it's a, just a a good review of transformations of functions in general. Good luck.